Ready? Yep. All right. Go ahead and ask the question again. <laughs> okay, so when you pull up to a lake for like a tournament or something, how do you break down a lake to know where to fish and where to target the biggest crappie? Okay, well, excellent question. First off, you gotta got to have a, a knowledgeable aspect of the lake and the season and where you assume crappie are going to be. You don't want to just be throwing darts in the dark. So since we are, you know, fishing winter pattern, we want to find that 23 to uh, 25, 28 foot depth. And of course, since crappie are kind of like the underwater quail of the world, everything's trying to eat them. Uh, you definitely want to have some type of structure where they can school together and ambush bait fish. So what you want to do is you want to go to your graphs. And if you take a look at this Garmin, uh, if you look at my charts, we'll go to fishing chart. Uh, if you look, I've got it all color coded. So I know that my, you know, 23 to, to 35 feet of water is this light purple stuff, all right? And the 20, the, the blue, anywhere from that 25 to 32 foot is that, that's that high level area. See that light blue? So I want to find structure or points uh, on my map. And so what I'll do is, uh, Garmin is nice enough in their stuff that it'll list you know, there's the swimming beach, there's the marina, there's this, there's that, here's the flooded timber. Uh, so what you wanna do is look for that light blue area that we see around there. And I always like to look at points like this right here. I don't think I've ever fished that area right there, but I can zoom in and I can see there's a point and a drop off right there. And that looks like it is basically uh, just opposite, right, of, right over there uh, where, those, where that tree line starts. And so what I would do before live scope, um, I would take my boat, drive to that area. And then the most important thing that, you know, made a lot of people famous in the tournament worlds uh, is the sonar called side view. If you take your side view imaging like this, and we, I usually like to keep it out at seven, 70 feet. But what you can do, you have to be moving when you use side imaging. So we'll say that we're in that spot. But what we can do is we can, I think I've got it set where I gotta be going about four to five miles per hour. But what you'll see is you'll get it under, oh, that's a, that's a stump. There's the tree we hit. You see that? <laughs> that's a, here, come over here so you can get, see that tree? That's what we just hit that killed the edge. But if you look, we're kind of coasting over these areas right here. And if you look, there's fish right there on that. So put it back in gear. We're gonna go real slow, four to five miles per hour. Uh, and it'll take a good picture of both sides of the lake. And if you take a look here on this side, going over some structure. This side got a bad reading. I think it's probably because we just hit that stump and probably jacked up the <laughs> transducer. But uh, if you look, there's a tree right there. Uh, going slow. Get in here a little bit further. We'll go through this stump field. And pretend like these stumps that we didn't know they were there. We would see that underwater. We'd be like, holy mackerel, that's great. Unfortunately, I don't see a school of fish on that that we just drove over. So we'd pass it up, but we probably would mark it. But we'll drive over one of these stump fields here and we'll see a school of fish. And when you do, um, let's just keep going here. But uh, there's some fish in the top of that tree right there, 35 feet. Uh, we'd want to be probably, like I said, in 25 to 30, so we'll go a little bit more shallow here. Probably hit some more stuff. Now look, there's a, a good brush pile over there. We're kind of focusing on the left side of the screen. Uh, there's a good school of crappie right there. There's 20, 30 little specks on there. You can actually pause it zoom in you can actually count how many crappie one two three four five six seven nine there's like 15 crappie on that so we don't want to fish that we want to fish a uh, we want to fish a uh, brush pile that's got a whole bunch of crappie all right 
So we'll keep going, keep it in in gear. And then once we find that brush pile, it's got four or five fish on it, or you know, four or five hundred, hopefully. Uh, let's just say it would be, let's say it's this brush pile right here. So let's just pretend like it is. Uh, we would pause it, we'd zoom in, we'd count how many fish are on it. You see, I've got this crosshair here wherever my finger goes. So I'd take my finger and I'd put it right there because that's the spot we want to fish. And then this little button right here is the waypoint mark. So we made it fish number nine, two, four, two, zero. So that's where we're at. So then we go back. And if we go back to our maps, we can go um, to our combos and we'll go combo where it's, there's what we just drove over with all the fish. And if we zoom in over here, here's two, four, two, zero. So then we basically just real slowly go back, turn the boat around See, here's the boat turning around. We go back, we get close to that 2420. We'd like to get anywhere from about 25 or 30 foot from it. Then we drop down the uh, live scope and we take a really good underwater live view of what those fish are doing and to see if they're cropping because live scope has such detail. You can tell if they're catfish, you can tell if they're carp, you can tell if they're bass, you can tell if they're um, you know, crappie or bluegill, you can, by the way that they move. Sometimes bluegill, sometimes crappie, sometimes, uh, um, what's the um, fish? Drum look the same on the screen. But if you spend enough time on the screen, you'll be able to tell uh, the difference in the way that they move and the way that they adapt and hold torch structure. And you'll know, hey, these are bluegill. We got to move on. They're moving real fast darting out to get your baits probably bluegill drum they'll stay real tight uh, to the bottom a lot of times and kind of tuck into coves and there only be about two or three on them so you know those are drum but uh, the best way to know for certain is to drop a jig down in their face hook one and, and come up but anyway i hope that helps you out but that's a that's a good way of you know covering or starting on a lake uh, that you don't know. Now, another excellent way of starting on a lake you don't know is talk to the people at the marina, at the bait shops, at the gas station. Say, hey, what are they biting on? What are they doing? Another excellent tip, uh, we went through a few different color jigs today, is uh, go online and find out what type of shad they have in the lakes. If they have gizzard shad, you want to use like a, a, a shark you know, probably a chartreuse and a purple color, or a chartreuse and black. If they have thin, thin shad, you want to use a chartreuse and white uh, because these colors, what they call match the hatch. It's a trout fishing term, you know, because trout are used to eating a certain type of bug at a certain type of year. So just like crappie and, and everything, you know, like us, if it looks like a cheeseburger or some pizza, we're probably going to have a bite. Am I right? You don't want, you know, crazy baits that are that we wouldn't hit. So same way with fish. You wanna match the hatch, make certain that you're throwing colors that uh, these fish uh, particularly like at the particular time. Now, another thing uh, here in into January and in February, when it gets cold, uh, these shad will die. When they die, sometimes they get caught in the ice uh, and they turn uh, just a pure shade of shimmery white. They're just kind of a rotten little floating fish with a little bit of you know shine on their uh, on their scales so you definitely want to use like a, a monkey milk or a real shimmery white like a pearl colored type jig uh, and you want to get away from the colors because these fish have been foraging uh, during the freeze out on these dead fish so when they get caught in the ice they're frozen there but then when the ice falls all these dead shad that didn't have the oxygen to survive they just real slowly float to the bottom and it's a feeding frenzy uh, for any fisherman, whether they're fishing for catfish, bass, or crappie. Uh, if you can get out on the water the first day that that ice breaks, usually around late February, early March, uh, get into the cove where the wind's blowing because the wind current will blow all those dead fish, you'll have a bonanza catching all sorts of different types of fish. So, Anyway, 
thanks man for having me out or coming out yep. with me you have fun i did you thank could, you you outfished your buddy i did yeah oh, well well yeah, he did he, he outfished you number wise oh, but i think you got the quality yeah he was fishing for quality. I don't know how he did it, but he, he caught some monsters. But thank you, Jacob, for yep. having me. And, and uh, tell your mom thanks. So, do you I have a will. good time fishing with oh, me? Oh, yeah. Would you suggest it? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, crappiekirby.com if you want to check it out. That's where they can book their trip? That's it. Where they, you can find out all the information. It's got my cell phone number on there. Just give me a call. And uh, love taking young people like yourselves out, and especially families with kids and moms and dads and grandpas and grandmas. and just like spreading the information so that people can come out here and make some good memories. Because you guys are going to remember this because I doubt it's very often you outfish it, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys.